Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing my Game Week 20 transfer plans because since the last video, we have had a double Game Week announced for Manchester United and Crystal Palace and we've had confirmation of the Manchester City and Tottenham double as well. So there are four teams doubling in Game Week 20 and our transfer plans will revolve around that and we'll also discuss potential double Game Week 21 as well. If you're enjoying the content here in this channel, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Let's aim for 2,500 likes on this video. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So guys, before we look at my team and my specific transfer plans, and I do have two free transfers, so there is a little bit of flexibility and I may be taking my first hit of the season. We'll have to wait and see for that. I thought I would just confirm what the double game week 20 is. And like I said, just briefly look at maybe which teams could double in double game week 21. We could get the announcement and there's a possibility it will be so before the game week 20 deadline. So even though we've got double game week 20 confirmed, I still wouldn't make your transfers yet because there's a chance we get double game week 21 confirmed and it may be that you prefer the doubles in 21 because as you can see on your screen, the doubles aren't great for 20. So as I said, City and Tottenham has now been confirmed. Some people didn't even realize that that wasn't confirmed. We needed to make sure that Man City and Tottenham both avoided FA Cup replays. That did happen, of course, Spurs won and City won, which means that they do indeed double in game week 20. So Spurs play Arsenal and City, two very, very tricky fixtures, but still two fixtures nonetheless. And Manchester City play Manchester United and Tottenham. So neither of them great, but these are two teams that on their day play well, especially City, sometimes Spurs. And an extra fixture, I do think you have to give it some weight. And some people say double game weeks are a trap. I don't buy that at all. I think if you're buying the right player, even if they are tricky fixtures, you are getting an extra fixture in there. Of course, the thing is, you need to make sure that that player is playing for a team that is worth buying into. And also that they are likely to play both in the double because we've seen with the likes of Mason Mount and Mitrovic in game week 19 that they don't always do so. So those are things to consider. But I do still think double game weeks are really worth buying into. And then the, the newest announcement, because Manchester United and Crystal Palace both avoided an FA Cup replay again, Manchester United and Palace has been moved into game week 20, which now means that both United and Palace double in 20. So Manchester United play City at home and Crystal Palace away. And then Palace play Chelsea away and Manchester United at home. You could argue that Crystal Palace away is a green fixture, but nonetheless, I don't think any of these four doubles are particularly nice. Of course, as soon as you have the likes of Man City, Man United and Tottenham in the double, it's never going to be great. I would say that on paper, just because of the Crystal Palace away is probably the easiest fixture there, you would say potentially. Manchester United, you could say, have the easier double, especially because City is at home. Now, I'm a Manchester United fan. You could say I'm biased. I wouldn't expect us to get much away against Manchester City at the Etihad. But when it's a home fixture, I actually don't mind that as much. I still think the City are the better team. I still think they would be expected to win that. But Manchester United have been good at home. For example, Marcus Rashford has scored seven games in a row at Old Trafford. So it maybe doesn't look... Maybe it's not as maybe as bad as it looks on paper. The other thing that I just wanted to briefly look at, like I said, is the double game week 21 possible fixtures. Now, at the time of you watching this, you may already know, but I'm expecting it to be later in the week if it is this week, potentially after the game week 20 deadline. There are some teams that could double in 21. And I think Ben Krillian and also Mikel and Lego Mane, the three that tend to predict doubles, have said that they think it is quite likely that we will get a double game week 21. As you can see here, if a team has 1.00 from Mikel Tokvam's little planner here, his algorithm, that means that they have one fixture in that game week. If it's two, that means that they have a confirmed double. So as you can see here, Arsenal Manchester City have a two for game week 23. That means that City and Arsenal are definitely both doubling in game week 23. If a team has, as you can see here, Arsenal in game week 21, it says 1.6. That means Arsenal have a 60% chance according to Mikel's algorithm, of doubling in game week 21. So what I just wanted to draw your attention to is Arsenal, Everton and Brighton all have a 60% 60 chance of doubling in game week 21. And as you can see here, Liverpool, Palace and Chelsea all have a 43% chance of doubling. And then there are some teams like Bournemouth have a 20% chance. Manchester United have a 7% chance. Now, Mikel hasn't updated this. I assume probably on the day that this goes live, he will send out an updated one. So go follow him over on Twitter. I'll probably retweet it when he does put it out. These percentages may change. So don't trust this completely. But I guess this is just to say we probably have a double game week 21 and it could be a much better set of doubles. So if you've got one free transfer and you don't really fancy bringing in any of the players in double game week 20, if you roll that transfer and go into game week 21 with two free transfers, that could be worthwhile doing. Or someone like me, for example, I've got two free transfers. I'm very, very much at the moment potentially leaning, leaning towards only using the one and then rolling the second because again, two free transfers in game week 21 could be really nice. So hopefully that is clear. The teams that double in 20, the teams that could double in 21, 
Let's now take a look at my team and my current transfer plans. So this is how my team is currently looking ahead of game week 20 with the confirmed doubles. As I said, two free transfers. My team value is up at 104.4 million now with the 0.4 million in the bank. So I'm feeling pretty flexible with my team. I've got lots of things that I could potentially do. I've got some players in my team who you could say are issues I may be thinking are long-term issues, but I don't necessarily need to rush out now. And I've got five double game week players. Now, of course, Foden, you could argue, is not a double game week player. And Edison's probably got a pretty low ceiling of probably a maximum of maybe 12 points, maybe 13, 14, if I'm lucky. So I'm not saying they're the best doublers in the world, but I do have five double game week players. And I have the potential with two free transfers to get up to seven. Now, as I said, because Double Game Week 21 looks like it could be a little bit nicer, and because I am looking at players like Erdegaard I probably want to bring in long term, maybe someone like Matoma for Andreas, who looks like he could be an excellent fifth mid, I'm thinking that the players that I might want to bring in for Game Week 21 that could double also look like good long term options. Whereas moving Darwin to Kane, yes, I know Darwin's been frustrating, but I would argue that I'd maybe prefer Darwin for slightly more long term if he starts to convert. I don't really want Kulisewski long term. I'm already tripled up on Man City as well. So whilst, yes, we have four teams that I probably don't want Palace players that much due to the pretty rubbish double and also they're not playing great at the moment anyway. So whilst I could attack double game week 20 and use both free transfers and maybe even take a hit, I'm eyeing up more so game week 21 for the reasons that I've just listed there. So when I look at my team, I don't think there are any issues. If I had one free transfer, I would be very tempted to just roll the transfer. So if you're looking at your team and it's in a similar situation to mine and you maybe don't really fancy this double game week that much anyway, I don't think there's an issue at all with rolling. Let me know down below if that is your current plan. If you've got two free transfers, of course you need to use one. And if you want to get aggressive and take it, then go for it. And I think maybe one of the reasons that I'm less tempted to do so is I've already got the City defense covered. I've already got Haaland, of course. And I think the two main players that I would be willing to really go out and try and get, whether that's for a minus four or whether that's for free, is Marcus Rashford and Luke Shaw. Now, the reason for that, not because I'm a biased Manchester United fan, but Manchester United are performing very well at the moment. Like I said, because the City game's at home and because Crystal Palace is arguably the easiest fixture for all of the teams that are doubling, I do think it's probably the best double on paper. And also, we could have a double game week 21 or 22. 21's very unlikely for Manchester United. 22 is possible potentially moving into 23 and 24 M moving forward I think we could have some doubles I think it's game week 29 and 34 there's a potential for a double for Man United as well that Leeds game has to be rearranged at some point so I think with the fixtures that Manchester United have coming up with the pretty nice double and with the way that Rashford and Shaw are both playing I think they are two players going out and uh, making sure that you get in your team outside of that I don't think there are any must-haves for this double I do think Kane is an excellent option it is worth bearing in mind that if Kane gets booked in the first fixture as we saw with Mitrovic in game week 19 he will miss the second fixture so if you're bringing Kane in there is a chance it's only a one game double game week for him of course he will go there to try and avoid getting booked but I assume Mitrovic did a very similar thing and he tried to avoid getting booked in that first fixture as well so do bear that in mind that you are running a slight risk with Kane and yeah so I, I don't think Kane's an option for me personally because I like Darwin and it's very difficult to get to Kane in two moves for me to do Darwin to Kane I would have to probably downgrade Foden which I'm not a fan of doing yes I know he's probably only going to play one if that in the double but I still think there's a chance he plays both I can't do James down and then Darwin up I would have to make another move so it's either take out Foden for someone like a Matoma and then bring in Kane for Darwin which doesn't really feel like it's a great move for me this week or taking a minus four, taking out James, taking out Darwin, and taking out another player. But that just feels unnecessary when, again, the Spurs double game week isn't great. I still think Darwin will come good at some point. And also Kane being on four yellow cards does worry me slightly. So when I look at the options that I've got for my team, I think Dallow in for James and doubling up on the Manchester United defence is a really nice option. Not necessarily for the double. I don't think, I think City will score and I think Palace away isn't an easy fixture. So I'm not necessarily expecting a clean sheet here, but it is a double game week. I do think Dallow will take back the, the number one spot from Aaron Wambasaka. I do think Wambasaka has been playing well. He will play the odd game. Maybe we'll see a little bit more rotation, but I do still think Dallow's first choice just due to how good he is with a ball at his feet. So Dallow in for James, and I would play Dallow ahead of Castagna. That's an option for me. The second option, which maybe makes a little bit more sense, just because I do think Castagna against Forest away is a decent option this week, is to do Martial in for Mitrovic. Now, if you've been following my team for the last few weeks or this season, you will know that I took out Martial for Mitrovic in game week 19. So I did Martial to Mitrovic. I could be doing Mitrovic back to Martial. But in FPL, I don't think you can be stubborn. And just because I took Martial out last week, I don't think it's a bad idea to bring him back in, especially when I've got two free transfers and a little bit of flexibility there. I think Mitrovic is fine long term, right? He's served his suspension now, so we think he's well, he's going to play every game. The fixtures aren't terrible, although they're not great over the next three or four. 
But Martial and Manchester United have been attacking very well. It is a double game week. And Manchester United look like they're going to sign Veghorst on loan. I do think that will be his backup to Martial. And I still think Martial is first choice, number nine for Manchester United. It could be a fairly short-term move again. Maybe I just have Martial for the next two to three and then move him on after that. The rest of my team looks pretty well secure. I'm happy with it. So I don't necessarily have to worry about making a slightly shorter term transfer such as Mitrovic to Martial. The other options that I've got in my team around the obvious James to Dallow, Mitrovic to Martial is taking out Salah and either doing Salah and Foden to De Bruyne and Kulisevsky or to to Bruno if I can afford it or to someone else. Basically taking out Salah, bringing in KDB. But because I have Triple City, I would have to take out Foden as well. Or... And this is very, very tempting. Let me know what you think of this down below. Is Salah and Darwin to Bruno Fernandes and Kane. I would be bringing in what we think is two penalty takers. Yes, Rashford or Martial might take penalties ahead of Bruno. But Bruno and Kane coming in could be really nice. But like I said, I think I want to keep Salah and Darwin. They are still getting the chances. They're just not converting them. I do think the salary is overpriced. I don't think Salah is worth the value we're paying for him. But I don't necessarily need that money elsewhere. I don't necessarily think that Kane and Bruno is much better value than Salah and Darwin. Yes, I'm getting two extra fixtures in game week 20, but Liverpool could double in 21. And I still think that Salah and Darwin, in my opinion, longer term, are probably better than Kane and Bruno. So that is probably a very short term set of transfers. And I always just feel, like I said, with Salah and Darwin, they are going to get chances. And in any given game, they could convert those. So I'm less of a fan of that, but that would give me two extra fixtures and two really nice options for the double. So they're kind of the options that I'm considering. I do think that the two obvious ones are Castagna, I'm sorry, James to Dallow and play him ahead of Castagna and then Mitrovic to Martial. Getting rid of James probably makes more sense and then I can keep Mitrovic in there. But I do think the Martial could be a really nice option for the double. So I would love to know what you think down below. If you had my team, feel free to ignore what I've just said completely. Feel free to offer something completely different. What would you do with my team? I've already got Triple City. Don't forget Edison in goal. So I can't bring De Bruyne straight in. And I've already got double Manchester United. So I can't bring in Dallow and Martial. It would have to be one or the other. Longer term, what I'm thinking about doing with this team is trying to get an, another Arsenal attacker in for double game at 23, but maybe even double game at 21 if Arsenal get one. So I'm looking at Erdegaard in particular, maybe Saka, but probably Erdegaard. I'm also looking at Matoma from Brighton, again, maybe for double game at 21. But I just think the Matoma at the moment, yes, he's more expensive than Andreas, but I've got a little bit of money in the bank. It could be worth investing in Matoma ahead of Andreas. He just looks so good. Obviously, the reintroduction of McAllister into their starting 11, we'll have to see how that goes. Will Trossard and Matoma share minutes on the left? We'll have to wait and see, especially when Welbeck's back up top as well. So there are a little things, a few things up in the air. I don't think I want to use both free transfers in game week 20. I've already got five doublers. The team's looking really strong. And I think double game week 21, if we get it, will be a slightly nicer double. And there are other players that I would rather prioritize long term. So if I was to make the moves now, it would probably be Mitrovic to Martial, roll the second free transfer, and then look to bring in the likes of Erdegaard and Matoma in game week 21. But please let me know down below what you would do on my team. So guys, there you have it. That is my Game Week 20 transfer plans video slash double Game Week announcement information. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. This is just an early look at the start of the week with my transfer plans and what I'm currently thinking about. There will, of course, be a Game Week preview video midweek. There'll be a team selection video towards the end of the week and there'll be a deadline stream on Friday before the deadline. So if you're excited for all of that content and you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing with my team, Make sure to subscribe. We are on the road to 60,000 subscribers. And please do like. Like I said at the start of the video, let's aim for 2,500 likes on this video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.